they talk. <laughs> I definitely want some of them Cinnabons. When was it created? Let's see. Yes, we have our first person on with our Wednesday Wednesday discussion of Tuesday talk. Yes, come on in, everybody. Come on in. Today is going to be a very informative Tuesday talk on a Wednesday as we explain Easter. It's important to know what we what Easter is, what Easter is not, what is the deception, all of that. Come on in, everybody. Yes, yes. Okay, great. I just want to thank everybody for coming in on a Tuesday talk on a Wednesday and at five o'clock during rush hour when you're getting off work or, or what have you. Thank you for showing up. As you know, you all know who Dr. Ray Hagens is. <laughs> we, have, we have Dr. Ray Hagens back. Dr. Ray was here when in October of 2021, when we discussed like preparation for dealing with our relatives for the holiday season, it was in preparation for Halloween and Thanksgiving giving, but really also Christmas because these holidays are rooted in Christianity, which we know have an African source, which we know is not well known and your relatives and your own people are the ones who fight against those truths. Mm -hmm. The myth that's behind it, the the origin of it, the true meaning of all of those things are that you know our relatives fight against it. And and you stayed with with Ray and Dr. Ray and me for three hours. Y'all about to wait this man out. I said I gotta <laughs> let him go. <laughs> so that's how I know. That you know stayed with the, with Ray and Dr. Ray. <laughs> so that's how that, I sorry. know. That Why is this coming up twice, you guys? Sorry. I'm sorry. This is let me let me put down everything I have up. I'm so sorry, y'all. Okay. All right. We are back. So what I was saying is that's how I know that you know who brother Ray is because we had him here and I had to, I had to free the man from everybody. We're going to get that same type of information for um, what is, you know, Easter. Why does Easter have us in such a, a tight grip? Okay. So without further ado, I'd like to bring to you Dr. Brother Ray Higgins. Round of applause. Model Chuck Queen, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited for this one myself. <laughs> well, it's always good to be on the air with you, always, you know. You. And uh, I think we make a great team doing this kind of stuff. We do. And, uh, of course, you know, you out there doing the work as a warrior sister. Oh, and uh, I think it's just absolutely wonderful. So I'm thank excited you. about today's discussion. And I'm honored that you asked me this. You oh, know. thank you. Yes. Easter, a hidden deception. Wow. Easter. Yes. You know, I was thinking about tonight's talk, and um, my mind went back to the many, many, many nights that um, I was studying, doing homework, doing modules, doing projects, doing papers, you know, in theology and in seminary and everything getting ready for what I thought would be my future as a Christian pastor. Um, but little did I know that the ancestors were, was preparing me uh, to do what we're going to do tonight, <laughs> you know? Uh, and of course, I had to go to their institution to learn their lives, mm. you know? And um, so I'm, I'm honored. I'm honored. I really am. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, you know, when I when I have a guest on Tuesday talk, we do a little conversation. We do a little talk and I have a title or I'll ask, you know, what the title would be. And Brother Ray said Easter. 
a hidden deception. I was like, oh, this sounds like a mini series on Lifetime. So I was really excited <laughs> <laughs> to hear what he has to say. So before we get into, um, you know, the actual, the hidden part, can you tell us first the Christian version of Easter, the Easter that we're familiar with, the Easter that we grew up, you know, participating in. Mm -hmm. And then after we get that, let's talk about the origin of Easter. Like, where did it come from? All right. Well, first of all, um, from the Christian perspective, Easter is the celebration or the annual celebration of the so-called resurrection, bodily resurrection of a so-called Jesus Christ from the grave. Um, and that's in essence what it's really all about. Um, you know, millions of sincere church going people uh, who profess being Christians every Easter Sunday morning, they get up in the pitch black hours before dawn. They hustle the kids out of bed, enjoy a quick breakfast, bundle up in the car for a drive to a nearby mountaintop or an outdoor bowl or a huge cathedral or a small countryside church. And they're going through all of this before daybreak. They're going to what is called an Easter sunrise service. And at the precise moment of the sunrise, and this happens everywhere, all right? At the precise moment of the sunrise, the minister or the priest will most likely turn to the east and face the rising sun with both of his hands or her arms in a supplicatory gesture, heralding the dawn of Easter Sunday and ask all the audience to pray as they face the rising sun in the east. And it's interesting that they know they're there to face the, the sunrise. And they know it's the S-U-N that they're out there to watch rise. But somehow or another, they don't think about the fact that somebody twisted the S-U-N into the S-O-N. So watching the sun or Ra, okay, or Kepper Ra, as we call the newness of the rising of the sun every morning, watching that happen, somehow or another, the Christians transmorphed that into the resurrection of a Jesus Christ. I don't know how they do that, but uh, <laughs> what is the sun coming up have to do with a S-O-N getting up out of the grave? But that's what Easter is really all about, the resurrection of a so-called Jesus Christ. Mm. You know, understanding the African origins of these of this mythology answered the questions that I had when I was eight years old. At the very latest, uh, at the very oldest, I was either seven or eight when I was saved. And I literally immediately had questions that never got answered until I learned about African spiritual systems and the mythologies. Mm -hmm. And so, those, you know, those questions got answered, which question never gets answered is, how do you believe something that you cannot prove? And how do you take us? This is the original story. And you deny that original story that we can prove existed when it was told. We can A story is a story. But we can prove that the origin of that story existed in a certain location and at a, and at a certain time and had these certain components to it and and people choose to ignore this history over here with where this the origin came from and choose to believe a source that they will also that they also know was very violent towards their ancestors 
Mm -hmm. That part I don't understand. I never get any, like it is, what's the date? April the 13th, 2022. I've been asking that question for years and I've never gotten an answer for that. So however they're able to selectively ignore information, selectively embrace information is the same reason that they took the S-U-N and turned it into the S-O-N. Mm -hmm. Whatever that is, it's just what they choose. And there's no rhyme or reason for it. You know, well, there, there, there is a reason for it. What's the okay? What's tell us the reason, brother Ray? The reason was to create a program or a, a brainwashing endeavor, okay, that would cause us who tap into or who believe their program, okay, to lose contact with reality to lose contact with history, to lose contact with mm. spirituality, and to lose contact with ourselves, okay? And, and how, they prom how they promote their program is through something called faith. Mm. That's right. Okay? Uh, you know, and, and, and you know, we, faith is promoted more than knowledge. Mm, when it mm. comes to religion. And the reason for that is because the compilers of the religion know that it cannot be proven. They know that there is no empirical evidence for their claims. Right. They know that it cannot be substantiated. So what they do is they make up this uh, senseless story, okay, and then tell people that they must believe it if they want to be saved for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not have, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John three sixteen. So it's about believing. It's not about knowing. Right. Okay. And see, you know, from, from, from my definition of it, belief is, or faith is belief in unverified thought. Okay? To believe in something that you can't validate is actually a, a sign of mental illness. Mm. Mm. Okay? When you believe, and that, that's actually in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of, of Psychological or Mental Disorders. Uh, mm. When you believe in something... Okay, uh, to the point of it affecting you emotionally, to the point where you want to cry and get all upset about it, ah, you know, and go to running, and you get literally emotionally out of control over something that you can't validate, mm. then that means that you suffer from a serious psychosis. And a psychosis, for those who don't know, in plain layman's terms, is when you have a break with reality. Yep. I have to agree with that. I mean, can anybody dispute that? If you dispute it, put it in the chat. <laughs> I mean, he, he yeah, <laughs> brother Ray said, please do. I mean, it's 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 scientifically um, uh, uh, defined as to what that is, and and I and I I don't know if I ever heard that before this this part of the definition, but it does make sense when your break from reality causes you to have very real responses like emotions um, mm -hmm. of, of of anger if people don't believe you if they talk bad about Jesus or anything mm -hmm. along those lines. I I put up to go along with what you said. Uh, you lose contact with when you have this faith that's uh, believing in something that basically you can't prove. It, 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 it disconnects you from reality, history, spirituality, and from ourselves. Mm -hmm. I posted on my Instagram page once, and I paraphrase, it was a meme that said, Black Christians will forego 4,000 years of African history for one Jesus Christ myth or that's lie. Right. It was either myth or lie, but it was- That's what we've myth. done. And, and you can call it like it is. It's a lie. It's a lie. Right. Yeah. And, it's, and- it's a, it's a fabrication of the Roman Catholic Church. Yep. So- the two sisters saw that and they were tag teaming me on Instagram, 
like it was like fighting two Money Mayweathers. It was like fighting Pretty Boy Florida and Money Mayweather, who's the same person at the same time. And I was like, what is the whole problem? If you don't like it, just just move on. Like everybody else who read it and didn't like it, and they moved on. But there is a visceral response to the truth. Yes. It's a it's a visceral, immediate like response to the truth. And, and you know, and, and, and that's because people who believe in this religion are emotionally attached to it. Right. And it's really right. deep when you are emotionally attached to something you don't even understand. And that's right. where we are. Yeah. We are, we are emotionally attached to this. You know what? We're talking about somebody paid the price for my sin. Right. That's what this is about. Now, think about that. This is a program, a religion that was literally written for the Caucasoid mind. Okay. Because of the things that they do, the things that they have done throughout world history, mm -hmm. as far invasions and genocide activities and, and murders and, and wars. Okay. I can understand them coming up with a program, okay, that would make them right in the eyes of God. Mm, did y'all hear that? I can understand that. I can understand when you know that you're wicked, when you know that you're no good, okay, and you don't know what your past is because you don't have one, because mm. you're Johnny come late to world history, when you don't have a past, then you must, of necessity, create myth to supplement the facts of your existence. Mm. And that's what these people have done. Yes. Okay? They've created a myth or a lie. It's not true. Right. Okay? And they've glorified their lie. They made their lie so attractive to compensate for their wickedness that people, and, and here's the deep thing about it. They taught us what the Bible says about them. <laughs> okay. So the Bible says that they're wicked and there's nothing good in them. The Bible mm. actually says that. Okay. It doesn't say that about all people. It's just talking about a certain, uh, uh, E emotional ethnological category okay and they're saying that they're sinful nothing is good in them okay um and and then they taught us that about ourselves and we took it and we believed it so now you got africans walking around saying that we're lost and undone on our way to a devil's hell and we need to be saved according to who Right. You know, and so that that's that's why this this thing here, this this pagan holiday that's coming up this coming week is so popular. OK, because if there is no resurrection, now, mind you, according to the Christian program, Jesus died. OK, to pay the price for sin. So what that means is since we have been taught that we are wicked and evil and that the death of Jesus washes all that away, we bit into that. When did African people become wicked and evil? By nature. Please tell me when. We haven't. We, we never did. were. And we still aren't. That's and we, we, still, and we still aren't. Right. Okay, but if you believe what they told you, my, my, I like to say it this way. When you don't know who and what you are, you will become and live by the code that others want you to be. Because you don't know who you are. And that's what exactly has happened here. Right. Okay. Uh, we were stolen from our motherland, okay? As as it says in the Protocols of Zion, I think it's protocol number 16, 
we will remove from the minds of men mm. all information that is undesirable to us. That's what these Jewish men wrote. Okay? And that's what they did. The truth of African spirituality has literally been if it had listen, if it hadn't been written in stone, it's like our ancestors knew. We have to we have to write this in stone, man. Gotta put this in stone. Okay, because people <laughs> gonna come along after us and gonna try to wipe it all away. Yep. You know, and if you go to if you go to Kemet now, and you can actually see the dismantling of Kemet, especially in, in, in Luxor at the Temple of Karnak. You know, you can actually see where they're disassembling our ancient artifacts. And why is that? Because if there's no evidence, there's no argument. Mm. So if you get rid of if you get rid of the truth, see, as long as the African evidence exists, the survival of their program is in danger. Is in is in jeopardy. Yes. It is. Absolutely. Okay. So to secure their program, they have to eliminate our story. Our evidence. Yes. Yeah. So let's let's go back to a, a word that you said. Wait, before I go there, I just want you all to remember he said that when you have faith, it is a belief, and I'm paraphrasing, in something that cannot be proven and that you eventually have this emotional and physical response to something that does not exist. Mm -hmm. And it also disconnects you from reality. That's a disconnection from reality. Yes. History, which is what Brother Ray just said when he said, if you don't, you know, if you don't know who you are, our own spirituality and disconnected from yourself. And, and one example of that is a disconnection of the spirituality that you have within. All right. So keep that in mind, y'all. I'm gonna put this in the chat, these four topics now brother ray said a good word this is i wanted to get some clarity on this what does pagan mean and why does it have a negative connotation well the word pagan literally comes from uh two words let me go from since we're talking uh, from a biblical perspective uh let's look at the old testament word uh of of pagan Okay, which is the word goi, G O W Y, Hebrew word goi, uh, which means pagan, heathen. Uh, it means a barbarous people of the northern hemisphere that do not serve the true and living God. That's what goi means. And again, the English words to make up for goi is are, are heathen, uh, pagan, okay. Um, evil or idol worshiper, all that kind of stuff. The New Testament term for pagan is the word ethnos, uh, E-T-H-N-O-S. And it means the same thing. It literally means heathen, pagan. Now, again, we African people have been operating under that false teaching because we took on, or I should say they forced upon us what the Bible says about them. And the reason why we get so happy, sis, and follow this, and, and to all those out there who are watching, follow this program here. Okay, see this. Here you have a person who, has, who suffers from a serious case of low self-esteem. Uh, they're not as successful as they'd like to be in life. Um, you know, things... They they not they they don't have what you call a good life, and then they go to this church, and they hear things like this: If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Right off the bat, that sounds good, okay. Sounds good. And then you're wicked. You're on your way to hell. Understand, this man paid the price for you to go to heaven. So no matter what you are, no matter what you've done, you can be saved because of this man's death on the cross. That's good news to a wicked person. 
I repeat, that's good news to a wicked, evil person. Okay, so African people, why are you classifying yourself as wicked and evil? Because they said right. that we were wicked and evil. Anything out of Africa, as far as they're concerned, is wicked and evil. Or witchcraft or, uh, you know, that kind of mess. So, oh, man, we, we suffer a serious psychosis. And my assignment is trying to free our people from the lies that we grew up with. And help us to understand that the temple of God is your body mm. mm -hmm. your, your physical body okay your physical body man is how do they say it um uh what's the word the um what's the word for temple uh i can't call it in in, in spanish what is it um ca uh, casa house uh Cuerpo uh, is body. Cuerpo? Casa de cuerpo? Casa de Dios. Casa de Dios. Yes, that would be the house of God. Oh, see. Si. Casa Temple de Dios. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and we think that the building that we go to to gather in is the house of God. That's just a brick and mortar entity. The house of God is you. Right. You are the place where God dwells. God dwells in you, not in a building of four walls. You know, and you should experience resurrection. That's what Easter is all about. Resurrection, but we must understand where that even came from. Because the whole concept of resurrection comes from ancient Kemet. And that's why King Queen Hatshepsut built these awesome tekenus, okay? Or we call them obelisk, okay? Which represents rise erection, where we has we somehow know the morph that into resurrection, when really it comes from two words, rise erection. And that's why when you see a statue or, 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 or inscription of, uh, of a sar, Okay, uh, risen from the dead with an erection. Okay, and it, and in the in the in the and the glyphs it actually says, "I am the one who was dead, but now I am alive." Mm -hmm. Okay, with all power. And how can you say how can you say power? Because you can see he has an erection, which symbolizes power. And so they stole and copied that imagery and created what's called the obelisk, or we call it the Tekken, and they have the cemeteries or the steeple on top of the church. It stands for rise erection or resurrection to eternal life. And that's really the true meaning of Easter. Okay, but what folk don't understand is Easter comes from a pagan practice. The word Easter the annual festival observed throughout Christendom in commemoration, again, of the so-called resurrection of a Jesus Christ. Okay, it comes from the uh, the original word, aeste, spelled E-O-S-T-R-E, -E, aeste. Okay, and of course that morphed into the word Easter. And Estre is the Anglo-Saxon goddess of spring and sex, to whom the month of April, where we are now, was dedicated. Dedicated to the pagan uh, god of fertility. And that's why you have a rabbit as a part of the Easter celebration. What does a rabbit got to do with Easter? <laughs> okay, uh, you know, rabbits... You know, rabbits don't lay eggs, so they don't. why are we why are we connecting eggs with a bunny rabbit? Well, because that's that's the pagan way of thinking here, right? Well, they see the egg as the symbol of fertility because of the yolk, the sun, right? Uh, and of course, the clear part being the sperm. So that's supposed to be fertility, planting the seed to give birth. And why Why the rabbit? Because the rabbit is the most fertile animal on the planet. 
Okay, so this is all about sex and fertility. We need to understand the whole meaning of the Easter egg hunt. All that is connected to pagan practices. Okay, uh, back in the day, the Europeans used to build giant penises. Okay, and put them out in the woods. And the women, they would paint the women. And the women had to go hide in the woods. Okay, next behind these big penises, all right? Or phallic poles, they call them. And when the men would find the women, even though they're painted in different colors, they could have all kind of sex with them because that's what this is all about, sex. And that's where the origin of the Easter egg hunt came from. So we don't even realize what we're putting our children into. Wow. You know? All right, going out, eat, you know, dying eggs, dip different colors, and, and then the children go out and hunt for them. That's what the pagan men did, but it was women, not eggs. So put in the chat if y'all knew that, because I didn't know that. Yeah, that's, that's the origin of the Easter egg hunt. Huh? I did not know that. So, so I, I just wanted to go back and say um, about the how you can be out here literally raising all kind of hell, enslavement, rapists, pedophiles, murderers, whatever, and then you just say, I'm sorry, Jesus. I believe that you're my savior and you take it all away. Mm -hmm. As opposed to not only comedic spirituality, but African spirituality, where you are responsible for you. Yes. And you will be judged on your deeds, on what you did. And you have to stand in front of the, in front of the judges or the scales and your heart must be lighter than a feather based upon what you did. So in our spirituality, and I'm claiming all of it, you are responsible for you and you have to live a humane and good life. That's what you have to do. Yes. Yes. I'm just out here wilding out and then, oh, my bad, right before you die and then you go to heaven. Well, you know, Queen, Christianity is the only religion that teaches that. Yep. Every every religious belief or, or, or spiritual belief system on this planet, besides the one that came from the European mind, mm -hmm. everyone says that you have to give an account of your actions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on Judgment Day. Okay, the only religion that does not teach that is Christianity. Christianity teaches that you can do whatever you want to do, involve yourself in any kind of vice, unlawful criminal activity that you want, and just exercise faith in this fabricated figure of the Roman Catholic Church, and you're eternally saved. And and you get to go to heaven That's and, what I'm talking about. and be with the people who you violated. Yes. With, with, that with impunity. Yep. I remember when I was in um, middle school, had to be middle school, going to, so I went to church and I went to, the church had a school and they, played sports against other Christian churches, uh, other Christian church schools in the area. And it was a soccer game. And team A was praying to win and team B was praying to win. And I was like, God can't answer all prayers because somebody ain't going to win. And a right. tie is not a win. So that's the, so don't give me no tie nonsense because that's not a win. And in, in, in your record, it'll say like 10-0-1, which means 10 wins zero ties and one loss. So it, it there there is this distinction. So somebody not about to get the answer, their prayers answered. How can right. the, the enslaved? It's, it's ironic you use that analogy because I came up with that same challenge one day. I don't, it just, come on, y'all. Both teams are having prayer in the locker room, asking to be victorious in Jesus' name. Yep. You know, and not, it's not just... I've noticed that's happened at all comp competitive events. Okay. Uh, this thing they have here in Atlanta, the, the hair show, 
a Bronner, Bronner Brothers Hair Show. Right. Uh, all of the competitors, they had they joined hands before they go out and they have prayer in Jesus' name that they would win the contest. Mm -hmm. So is God a prayer answering God or not? Okay, because only one person can win. You asking questions, brother Ray. You're not supposed to do that. Huh? I said you asking questions, brother Ray. You're not supposed to do that. You just oh, I gotta to make you think. You I gotta make the listeners think. Okay. Uh, you if you have 15 teams here all competing at this massive event, the Olympics or whatever, okay, there's only gonna be one winner. Period. So you mean God didn't hear 14 other people? He only heard the one. Or why why or should I even say he only heard the one? You see what we've done? We have constructed God in the image of man. Mm -hmm. And we think that God operates according to the dictates of our mind. We think that God is a genie <laughs> and a lamp and and prayer is is what right. we use to rub the rent that rub rubs it. the lamp. With, rub and, and God's supposed to pop out of the magic lamp saying, your wish is my command. That's bull crap right there. That's not how it works. <laughs> I've never even thought of that analogy, but Brother Ray, that's exactly what it is. Like, that's, that's like what we do. Prayers answered on demand, like, yeah. like a movie on demand, answer my mm -hmm. prayer on demand. That's exactly how we hope. That's the perspective we operate in. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you want from God, just pray about it. The Bible says it this way, whatsoever you ask yep. in prayer, believing you will receive it. Yes. So people see God as a lottery ticket. <laughs> they I do. I use that analogy, but that's in essence, especially when it comes to our money in church. That's what it is. You know, it's, we, 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 we give our money in church. Like we're buying a lottery ticket because we're operating on the same principle. Because we've been told if you give, God will give back to you way more than you gave. Right. That's that's a lottery ticket. <laughs> I mean, come on. Here. Basically, but they, but they think that it's even better than a lottery ticket. It's like a guaranteed lottery ticket. Right. Exactly. You know, and so uh, as long as we're into this program, man, you know, uh, I know we're supposed to be talk talking about Easter. Uh, for example, I, I for for let, let me kind of give some biblical reference here um, for those out there who saying, OK, well, brother, you are not telling us that Easter is not real. Well, the word Easter is only used one time in the Bible. Once. OK, and that's in. The book of Acts, the 12th chapter in the fourth verse. And then it's the King James version of the Bible. Okay. And the word in the in the Greek is the word pascha. It's spelled P-A-S-C-H-A. Okay. Pascha. And it does not mean Easter. However, that's the word that has been put in the Bible in place of that word. Actually, the word Pasha means Passover, not Easter. Mm. Okay, so before we go there, I'm, I'm, I'm going to swing on back. I wasn't, see, see, I'm learning too. I'm learning too. I just, this comment by Corey Chandler, the truth, the truth can be unbelievable, Pastor Ray, I can dig it, but it still breaks my heart to our family, still embraces uh, um, percepts and concepts that were never meant to us, meant for us. Corey, I want you to know we're going to answer that question, but we're going to answer that towards the end. All right. But I want you to know that. And then somebody else said, asked a question. And basically, if our bodies are divine and I'm I'm paraphrasing because I can't find the comment now. If our if our bodies are divine, then why do we have to shed that body? Because the spirit dwells within the body. The spirit never dies. Even in science, where you know that energy or matter can can never be created, 
nor destroyed. And so if you look at the spirit like energy, that's what it is. These physical bodies are not the spirit. It are not are not in and of itself the divine. It's the temple. It's the house. That's why you have to take care of it because of what's inside of it. You know, just like the physical manifestation of a temple being um, a shrine or a temple, you had priests, you had wab priests who cleaned the temple because the spirit of the divine was, we, we requested that, that to be in that space. And so when you're going to have anything that's divine, you clean the space, you clean it, you, you, you know, you, 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 you ceremony for it to clean that space. Well, your body is that space. And that's one of the reasons. And uh, we had Sanjeti from the Temple of Anu who came over, who, who came on a couple times and went in depth about uh, cl cleaning the space. Why? Why are we cleaning the space? We're cleaning the space because of what we bring into it. We bring the divine into it. So this body, all these bodies, everybody watching, your body is going to go back to the earth. That's the second reason. The physical manifestation of the divine is a part of the life cycle. That's just not human bodies. Mm -hmm. That's plants. That's um, offerings. Uh, and I'm and I'm glad there's somebody, someone on. We had a conversation about offerings, and I I also wanted to mention this too. But I guess I'll mention it here. When you have when you do your offerings to your ancestors, you you as the individual eat the offering because we know that this is to feed the ancestors spiritually, to call their name and to show the respect to them. But you eat the offerings or you can uh, give the offerings to animals so that they eat it. I'm not going to do that where I live because I'm, <laughs> I'm bringing out the bears, the deer, the, oh, uh, the bobcats, the mean geese, who will beat you down? Okay. Have you ever seen an angry geese goose? I have. Oh, yes. Yes. Duck. Yes. I'm not because doing that. I've okay. seen. I've seen them actually chase people. Yeah, me too. I was yeah. in my car and I made sure my door was locked and I saw them chase somebody. Mm -hmm. So um. So basically, the offering for the ancestor is to show the respect for the ancestor and to bring them into the space, okay? The other way that you can dispose of the offering is to recycle it. If you have a compost of some sort, you can do that. But that has to go back to the, in the life cycle. We don't throw that out. We recycle it. Our physical manifestation is the dwell, is the temple. That's why you gotta keep it clean. That's why you don't eat certain things. That's why you don't have a whole lot of people all over you. That's why for me as a woman, I don't have a whole lot of sexual partners because you ain't going to get all up on me like that. I keep it. You have to keep your body sacred for that space. OK, I know this is not necessarily a top this on uh, Easter, but I thought that that was an important question that um, that um, was requested. Mm -hmm. So now getting back to Easter. Um, can we go back to the the word of Pasha? And then kind of go from there about how, how why is Easter such an important, um, how, Easter is big. You get your hair pressed, you get new clothes, it's, it's, you get your patent shoes. East, Easter is big because the Bible says these words. If Christ be not risen, then everything we're doing is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. So the entire Christian program hinges on one thing, mm. and that's the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday morning. Because as I said, the Bible says it this way, and I'm, let, me, let me quote it more accurately. If Christ be not risen, then our faith is in vain, um and your your faith is in vain uh so in essence transliterated is saying if christ be not risen then everything we're doing is just smoke and mirrors it's meaningless now it's interesting that the bible actually says that yeah yeah okay because the the, the writers of the bible know that that's factual if christ did not get up out the grave then everything we're saying is a waste of time. They know it's a waste of time. <laughs> they know it's a waste of time because they put it together. Yes, 
the thing is, our people don't know it's a waste of time, and the rest of the world don't know it's a waste of time. So we bit into their agenda. We digested their agenda. Okay, and again, every year on Easter Sunday morning, millions of people all over the world will get up before sunrise to go out and in, to participate in a ceremony of watching the sun come up. And many of them are not even connecting the dots. Okay, it's yeah. a ritual. Yeah. And while I'm on that, let me let me let me let me say something about the ritual. And and this this the I don't this has been I, my spirit has been dealing with this lately. That we should not put too much credence in a ritual. Mm. Let me explain what I'm trying to say. And I hope it comes out right because I know a lot of people are quite serious about their rituals there is no power in a ritual a ritual is nothing more but than a symbolic act so what gives the ritual its power is your psychological perspective about the ritual for example the wedding ceremony that's a ritual. Mm -hmm. Why is it that people think that after the ceremony is over, that something took place that did not already exist before the before the ceremony began? That's what I mean by giving power to a ritual. You think that, I don't mean you, but people think that the wedding ceremony is actually joining them together. That's just a ritual. A ritual is nothing more than an announcement, supposedly about a reality that exists within you. Let me use another ritual, for example. Let's let's use the ritual of smudging. Right? You familiar with that? I'm sure. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. For those of you out there who, who smudge or you burn incense, why do we smudge? We smudge to what? Clear the air, right? Or clear the atmosphere? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I want to be sure. I need you to help me here because okay. just, just in case I'm in error. Okay. Right. Right. Yes. We, we smudge to clear the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Clear the atmosphere of what? Any, any energy that is not good, that is not clean, stale yes. energy, also to make a break from what was happening in this space before I smudged. So okay. it's in prep, it's, it is to make a demarcation from the space before and also what we're getting ready to do. Okay. To now, now see, you see the meaning that you just gave? Mm -hmm. to smudging okay follow what i'm saying carefully because i'm not i'm not against smudging but i'm just helping trying to get us to understand the power of the ritual mm -hmm. okay there is no smoke anywhere that can chase away a demon or an evil spirit or bad energy but because of the ritual, this is what we uh, attest to it doing. This is what we say that it does. This is what we believe that it does. This is what we claim that it does. So therefore, psychologically speaking, when we smudge in our own mind, We've cleared the air. Did that make sense what I just said? It makes sense. Mm -hmm. So guess what? The room is now pure. Is it pure because we burned something? Or is it pure because 
of our psychological disposition that now exists because we burnt something. Well, making sense. Uh, you are you are definitely making sense, and I I do know that with certain things that are burned, there is some kind of a reaction that can cleanse the air literally. So you do have a literal air cleansing and a a, a spiritual, which which is really the interpretation such, you put on it. Such as such as what would that be? I don't know the the name of it off the top of my head. It, okay. it, was, it was named when Sanjetti came on. He named all of it. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Again, understand what I'm saying, and I don't want I don't want anybody out there to think that I am against smudging. I am not against smudging. Okay. What I am trying to get us to understand is we give power right to the ritual. So therefore, the ritual has meaning for us. Even same thing with water baptism. It's a ritual. It's a ritual. People get baptized thinking that their sins have been washed away. Because that's what they're taught. Be baptized in the name of Jesus for remission and, and have your sins washed away. So people go down into this water and do participate in this ritual, and they come up out the water thinking that they are now sinless, which in turn has a psychological effect on them, and they go to rejoicing. Yes, 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 they go screaming and oh, ah, yeah, you know. <laughs> And really, all you did is you went through a ritual that you gave meaning to. That you gave power to. Exactly. Absolutely. You know, I saw on Facebook, my cousin, my second cousin, my cousin's son um, was just baptized. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember when I was baptized. It's so funny you say this. My goodness. I just saw that picture yesterday. I remember what it felt like when I was baptized. And the power that I gave to it when I was eight or whatever, however old I was when I was saved. Mm -hmm. And I look at versus yesterday when I looked at my cousin getting baptized and I said to myself, I can't like, I can't believe that I have family members who are younger than me. My cousin is younger than me by like five years, something like that, who still believes this. Why are you doing this to your kid? You know why? Because that's the power that I gave to it. It has, it, mm -hmm. I, it, it, the power is, I see that th you are being brainwashed or programmed. Mm -hmm. I brainwashed might be too heavy. No, it's the perfect, that's the perfect description. Or program, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, and so again, there's that power, but what is it? Is it power to save your soul? Is it power to continue in the line of first you get saved, then you get baptized? Or is it power for you to say, why is this still happening in my family? Mm -hmm. So it is, it is the it is the power, you know, that you give to it. Mm -hmm. And 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 do y'all remember watching Greenleaf? If y'all watch Greenleaf, put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of Greenleaf, part of the opening visuals were black people like walking through the water, getting baptized. That's right. Oh, Greenleaf had so much in it because I knew what I knew now. I knew that then when I was watching Greenleaf and it just, it just had so the, the, the iconography, the, the visuals and, 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 and the things they said and did looking at it from a different perspective had a different power associated with it. Mm -hmm. So yes, the rit rituals definitely, are have a power to them that you give to them whatever that power is depends on what you know about the origin of that of that particular power okay not, mm -hmm. of, that, of that particular ritual now mm -hmm. i want to take us through like a christian week where and you correct me if i'm wrong brother ray we have palm sunday fat tuesday right does that mm -hmm. fat tuesday come after palm sunday uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I think I it forgot does. too. But here's what I do know: you have Palm Sunday, then you when have is Mar when, when is Mardi Gras? I don't know. 
Okay, because Fat Tuesday and Mardi Gras are the same thing. Oh, so it's not now because yesterday was Tuesday. We would have known if people were out okay. there wilding out. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, so we have we have Palm Sunday, then we have Good Friday, then we have Easter. Brother Ray, can you walk us through that week of Palm Sunday to <laughs> Good Friday to Easter? What is Palm Sunday? What are the palms? What are we doing okay. with these palms? Okay, I'll, I'll walk us through that week as though it actually happened. Okay, okay. notice how I said that, right? Because we, we, we talk about it like it actually happened. Okay. And, and folk need to understand, but Palm Sunday uh, was, well, according to the story that we read about in the Bible, uh, Jesus had to go back into Jerusalem, right? And of course, it's leading up to his crucifixion and death and burial and resurrection, all that kind of stuff. So the Sunday before he's crucified, He's riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, right? But the word had gotten out about this dude, according to the story. Please, y'all, as y'all listen to me describe this, understand, I'm not talking about something that actually happened. I'm talking about what we're reading in the Bible, right? Okay, so as he goes into Jerusalem, the word had gotten out about the miracles he had performed and da 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 so he was the man of the day, right? This dude is coming into Jerusalem and everybody's so excited about him coming. He's riding on a donkey and the people were so honored that he was coming into Jerusalem that they actually tore branches off of the palm trees to cover the ground so the donkey would not have to step in dirt. Okay. And hence we have what's called Palm Sunday. Hmm. Okay. And of course, he's now in Jerusalem, according to the story, and everything is leading up to the week where he gets arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane and he's crucified, you know. And, and while I'm on that note, let me throw, throw this out there too, right? Because according to what we've been taught, but we never give it any, we never gave it any thought. Pontius Pilate, supposedly, right? And I'm saying that because that wasn't real either, but supposedly Pontius Pilate was perplexed about this man who he couldn't find no fault in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he went to the people and the people said, whom shall I deliver unto you? I mean, he said that to the people, whom shall I deliver unto you, right? And he said, shall I deliver unto you him who is called Jesus, or should I deliver unto you Barabbas? Now, here's the problem. Like I said, it didn't historically happen, but in literature, here's the problem. What people don't know is Barabbas first name was Jesus. Mm -mm. Yes. Yesu Baraba. Bar Abba. Bar means son of. Abba means the father. Barabbas' first name was Jesus. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So what you're saying here is deliver unto us Jesus, son of the father. That's who Barabbas would be. Now, isn't that also Jesus? <laughs> but again, see, when you know, when when something never actually historically happened, right? You have to come up with a madness to the story. You know, um, <laughs> it didn't happen. So 
So, and and I get a kick out of trying to explain what did not happen. <laughs> That's a deep thing right there. I, know, you know, right? I almost get a headache sometimes trying to explain knowing how, no, knowing the frame of reference that our people have. And I'm trying to explain the truth to them, knowing that they're believing a lie. That can be a little tedious sometimes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So I, I, I don't think I ever learned about the, the um, palms on the ground. Really? Well, the, yeah. That's, that's what Palm Sunday is all about. It, it might. So, you know, I believe that Jesus was our Lord and Savior, but that's it. I didn't believe anything else. And okay. I don't like I didn't believe the bush burned and the Red Sea parted and Moses stood on. I don't know what and got the Ten Commandments. It just none of it made sense. And when I asked questions, I they, they didn't answer me directly, but they gave me an answer that sounded like it was the answer. And I knew that that they were trying to deceive me, but they could not. And that was me at eight years old. Okay. So. I wasn't paying attention because I felt like I had to know this because I thought it was a story. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. And so you know, yeah, so yeah, um, it is because <laughs> it is a story. It is a story, you know. Exactly um, what it is. So I never knew that about the palms. Yeah. Um, I was volunteering at a place on Palm Sunday, and everybody it was at a church. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave that for another conversation. It's at a church. Actually, my father's parents went there years and years ago, but whatever. Um, and there were palms there and they were like configuring them into Braiding them and everything. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so I didn't know it was a palm and I didn't know what they were doing. And so I'm like, so what is this? What are you guys making? And they were like, this is, you know, it's Palm Sunday and we're making palms. And I was like, oh, okay. And they were like, would you like one? I said, oh no, thank you. And mm -hmm. these were elders um, these were some Caribbean ladies and, and, you know, they were elders. So I said, no, ma'am, no, thank you. And, um, you know, I just was like, in my mind, I'm like, oh my goodness, it just, it, it, it really gets to me that people still go through these rituals in this day and age of YouTube and StreamYard and, and Sonnetter and Instagram and just conversations. It's just, I, it just, I, you have to try to keep your, you have to work at keeping your bubble, your bubble. And if you have to work at keeping your bubble, your bubble, and you're aware that you have to keep it, then what does that say to you? You know, like, I don't understand, but anyway, so t can you tell us what is good Friday? What's good Friday? I don't know why they call it good Friday. <laughs> okay. Uh, unless they are attaching the connotation that this was the day that the sins of the world were paid for. If they're attaching that meaning to Good Friday, then I can see them calling it Good Friday. But did anybody really die to pay for the sins of everybody in the world? Or is that what we were taught? Because, see, the Bible actually says that no one can no one can pay the price for your sins. The Bible says that plain as day. It actually says that God, the Father, will not take the sins of the Father and put it on the Son. Mm. It says it this way in 18th chapter of Ezekiel. Uh, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Transliterated is the person who sins. That's the person who's going to die. In other words, it's saying God's not going to blame somebody else for what someone, for somebody else's sin. But yet that's what we were taught happened to us. We were taught that because of Adam's sin, God has condemned everybody in the world. Because of Eve said no, right? They blamed he blamed it on the women, on the woman. Well, actually, he well, he didn't blame it on the woman. He didn't. No. It says, as in Adam, mm -hmm. all have sinned. Mm. 
Ain't that deep? I mean, what kind of thinking? Man, these people got a messed up mind. Damn. <laughs> Woo. I mean, think about that. You, you. I mean, how can your mind even fathom some of this stuff? The idea that God is going to blame everybody in the world and say that they are sinners and no good, that when they come out of their mother's womb, they're automatically a sinner because of what somebody did in the garden because they disobeyed. What kind of God is that, man? What kind of God would do such a thing? Well, we yeah. could also we could also ask what kind of God allows enslavement to happen and child rape and famine and all, right. all of that other stuff. Right. Well, then again, this is what I mean by man, man, man's, uh, what am I trying to say? Man's, uh, well, God, man, man made God. Man made God. Yeah. Yep. Now, um, Daria, who's uh, one of our initiates, she had a good, uh, this is actually what I was thinking. She wrote, we were taught that Good Friday was the weekend before Jesus was supposedly rose again. So if 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 he rose on Sunday and he rose three days after the crucifixion, so he rose on Sunday, Saturday, Friday. So was he crucified on Thursday or Friday? The math doesn't add up, does it? It doesn't, especially, especially since there are different calendars, but I guess in the Gregorian calendar, but, you know, it's like, how do you have the day that he died? Um, anyway, I guess that would be. Well, again, again, Queen, like I said, it's hard to explain what never happened. Right. But okay. even in the story, it doesn't it didn't like, happen. Even when you were a teenager, you lying. Get your story straight. Right. <laughs> it, it didn't happen. So. You know, whenever you're trying to explain what did not happen, it's going to be problematic. It's going to be problematic. Yeah. It's going it's to be something not going to jive. So looking at the, just a quick little rundown from Palm Sunday to Good Friday to Easter, we have Jesus ride, riding on a donkey um, and the word had spread of his good works. That had to be on Palm Sunday. And then someday during the week, I don't know the story that well, you guys. So I'm, I'm not trying to yeah. be. Well, a whole lot of stuff but, happened. He right. went to the temple and, and threw the, temp, the, the, the tables over mm -hmm. uh, of, of the, uh, of the uh, merchants. Okay. Or, or, or what do we call them? Oh, uh, disciples? The, no, not the disciples. When we give an event and people are there selling stuff, what do we call those? Vendors? Vendors, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he went into the temple. Turning over the vendors' money, turning over the table, spill of money all over the place. So that was grounds right there for them to say, "Let's kill this dude." <laughs> wow. wow! Right? Um, but you know, and of course, his claim of being uh, one with the Father—that mm -hmm. was blasphemous and worthy of being stoned to death. So all of this kind of stuff. Plus, based on the story that we're told, um, he was being recognized. OK, uh, as what we call the COINTEL program today to prevent the rise of a messiah mm. who mm -hmm. could unite and electrify the people and empower the people. Well, according to the Bible. OK. Uh, in fact, oh, man. So if everybody can understand the backdrop here. Um, the 11th chapter of John, the book of John breaks it down for us very well. In the 11th chapter of John, um, Jesus supposedly raised Lazarus from the dead, right? Now, out of all of the miracles that he had done in the past, nothing was as powerful as this one here. Now, he had raised children from the dead. No big thing about that. But he had not raised an adult from the dead. Okay, and to raise a grown man from the dead, that had to be dealt with. Because when you're raising adults, okay, so according to the 11th chapter of John, uh, 
the word got out that he raised his due from the dead. And the Bible says, then they called, then called the chief priests uh, and elders together a council meeting saying, what are we going to do? Because this dude is doing a lot of miracles here. So what are we doing about Jesus? Did y'all exactly. hear what he did? Yo, did you hear what Jesus did? He raised exactly. Lazarus. I'm right now. You That's got what it. Right. So they're saying, if, and then they actually says this in 11 chapter of John. It says, if we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. Mm. And we will lose our positions as leaders over the people. The Roman government will come and get rid of us. So it says, and they took counsel from that day forward to put him to death. So according to John, the 11th chapter, the entire reason that Jesus was crucified or killed was because he was a political threat mm. to the religious leaders of that day. And he had to be killed. It had nothing to do with dying for the sins of the world. But then again, this is their story. But you know what? The reason that people don't know the story is because people ain't reading the Bible. Exactly. I mean, and you know, it's interesting that you say that because right. I just had lunch today uh, with uh, Sister Wakila Shabazz, uh, one of the sisters that sings for us on our program. And she said, the reason why I stepped away from Christianity is because I read the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that deep? I told her, I said, sister, you need, wow. to, you need to make that a meme and put it on Facebook. The reason why I stepped away from Christianity is because I read the Bible. You need to come on Tuesday talk. Oh, you would, you would love to have her on. That would mm -hmm. be great. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, she was talking so good today. She was telling me how uh, the church that she had attended, how uh, one of the members was really putting her through the ringer because she had walked, you know, stepped away from Christianity. Mm -hmm. And just listening to the stuff that was coming out of the sister's mouth, you know, it makes a teacher feel good. Okay. When that teacher can listen to the student restate what they heard or what they learned from the teacher. In their own words. So she was stating it so powerfully today. I told her, I said, I'm gonna call you Mother Sh Mother Shabazz. Mm. She mm. oh, she was talking good today, girl. Yes, mm. she was. Mm. Yeah. And and Wakila, if you listening, because I, I told her about uh, you know, so Wakila, if you listening, uh, you heard the sister, we gotta get you up here so she can have you on her show and hear you sing as well. Yes, oh, sister, that be I don't know if you, I don't know if you've heard of it, but that girl can blow. You hear what I'm saying? Oh my god, that girl can sing. Oh, mm. 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 yeah, okay, so, but that ain't the topic for today, so well, uh, but that's fine. Uh, so, so, so you know, Brother Ray gave us the reason that um, Jesus was killed, he was he was a, a political person that had too much power, and I was just looking at something with Malcolm X, and that was one of the reasons that that was the initial reason that surveillance mm -hmm. began on him because mm -hmm. there were some brothers who were in a fight. Um, Malcolm X and someone else went over there to see what the situation was. And basically for a variety of reasons, there were people, there was a crowd outside and brother Malcolm told them they needed to go and they left. Mm -hmm. And the folks were like, Oh, we can't have no black man with that kind of power over other black men. Yeah, and that's when the COINTEL Pro began on Malcolm. Nice. That, that, was, that was the beginning of his of his second part in, in terms of having, or not second, but having to deal to deal with them. So, yeah. so, um, so then after that, they 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 crucified Jesus. Mm -hmm. Three days later, he rises again. Well, now, that's the story. That's the story. Now, notice, notice what you just said. I'm I'm asking because when the sister wrote the question, or in the, in, in some the sister in the chat room, something about mm -hmm. him rising again. Right. Notice what y'all are saying, and we say it so much we don't realize that we're actually even using this word in the statement. Well, again, the word again. Yeah. Mm. Why do we say? Excuse me. Why do we say he rose again? I don't know. We need. Can you tell us why we say that? Because I, I never knew that. Of course, I can. <laughs> <laughs> we say he rose again.
because it's not about the S-O-N. It's about the S-U-N. Ah, uh, ah, uh, wow. Okay, and every morning it rises again. Now, it doesn't actually rise, but the way it looks coming over the horizon because of the rotation right. of the earth. You know, and that's why we have the word Kepper Ra. Kepper means new or new beginning. Ra is the sun, right? So Kepper Ra means the newness of the sun again or the rising again of the sun. And that's why the Bible copied it and put it and said it said this way in the Bible. Thy mercies are new every morning. Every morning. Let's talk about the rising of the sun. Listen, I'm going to ask one of my black Christian friends, how many times did Jesus rise? So that's, you that, exactly. Again? That's what that's exactly. Why, you again? why, why do y'all keep saying? In fact, they even put it in a song. Go ahead, drive the nails in my hand. Oh, Laugh at me where you stand, for I'll rise again. Ain't no power on earth can tie me down. Why are you saying our? And you know it's deep because I used to hear that song, sung in church, and I wanted to know what does he mean? I'll rise again. Where? Why? Are we, why is he saying? In fact, it actually says it in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and bury me, and on the third day I will rise again. Nobody stopped to ask, why is he saying again? Did he rise before? I wish I had a thought of that when I was eight, y'all. Because I definitely would have asked somebody that question. Well, when did yes. he rise before? All we have to do is think, Queen. <laughs> but That's you know what? We have to do. Even if we, so, if we would just think, we would we would discard a whole lot of this mess we've been taught. There's so many dots to connect. Like we even talked about it here that we know it's the SUN that rises again. And rises every Sunday, uh, every every morning, and not okay. the S O N. They took S U N, made it S O N. We talked about that today, and I still had to make the connection of rise again. <laughs> was the what we talked about earlier? And uh, so there's so many like parts everywhere yes. here yes. and there, and you just have to connect all these dots to kind of you know make right to make it make sense. Like bliss, bliss, blessed life. You know, was saying. I, I wanted to, to also mention this. Easter is defined as the first Sunday following the full moon after the vernal equinox. Um, I have a friend who is, he's brainwashed. He's completely brainwashed on the Bible. As he, this black man, as he's matured and gotten a bit, I don't, I don't know what's happened in his life because it's hard to get black Christians to acknowledge when they separate even a little bit from any of the indoctrination. Mm -hmm. But he, um, I can have, we can have better conversations with each other. And I, and also I've matured and I understand people are brainwashed, right? Mm -hmm. But I asked him about this. If you don't believe in, if, if pagan is so awful and you don't believe in the stars and the moon and celebrating or recognizing that, then why is Easter the first Sunday following the full moon after the vernal equinox? Mm -hmm. And you know what I got? A whole lot of this. A whole lot of this. <laughs> A whole lot of what? That's what am I doing? Nothing that makes sense. That's what it is. That's what I got from him. I'm sorry, do it again. Now I'm looking at you now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know why? What was happening? See, what, what you saw was, as a psychologist, we call that the physical manifestation of cognitive dissonance. Well, well he wasn't really literally doing this. I'm just saying. Oh, I he, thought, okay, I thought he was actually no, no, doing that. He wasn't literally. This is me saying he was just doing a whole lot of double talk. His, word, let me, his words were doing this. Like, okay. well, um, da, 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 da. I'm asking him a straight question. If you don't believe it, then why are you using that as your guide to recognize the most important holiday in your whole tradition. Yeah. I asked him that straight up. Yeah. That is something you say you don't do, but you do it. If you didn't do it, you wouldn't know when Easter came. And if you don't have Easter, you ain't got nothing. 
That's he couldn't right. answer my question. That's right. Like I said, the biblical text says, in fact, you know what? Let me let me find that. If Christ be not risen, because for those out there who may want to know what that is in the Bible, um, uh, Google, if Christ be not risen, where would that be? It's in one of the Pauline epistles. If Christ be not risen from the dead. Okay, that is in 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 14. It says, and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is worthless. Right. Wow. So that's so so Easter has to exist. Easter has Easter is Christianity. Without it's, Easter, it's, it's, it's the whole it's the whole foundation of Christianity. What is it? What is Christianity without Easter? Right. And see, you gotta understand Easter was actually determined by Constantine. In, in 325 at the Council of Nicaea, the same council meeting that declared the divinity of Jesus. Right. Okay. And so both things were decided. The founding, I mean, the, the, the day of celebrating Easter was also done at the Nicaea Council in 325. So, um, so yeah, I, my, I'm sorry, my dog has a pretty loud bark. I That's just okay. Wanted to to comment on what Asar I'm glad said. you have a dog. Shoot. <laughs> right. It said, thank you, sound like he can take care of you, too. Yeah, he's a cutie pie. She's a cutie pie. Thelma. Okay. What, what, what kind of dog is it? She's a mutt. She is a um, like a um, a hound dog and probably some terrier. And Will she protect you? I hope so. But she's really just a greedy little thing when she's in the house. And she eats dead animals when <laughs> okay. go outside. That's what that is. Um, As Asar Aten said, he's where he needs to be. Let people transform organically. We must stop trying to force transformation um, my, by information. I'm not trying to, to do anything with my friend Asar Aten, okay? Well, as, let, me, let me speak to that as well, okay? Mm -hmm. um, if we lived by the code, live and let live. Mm-hmm. Okay, then we would be enemies of our own people. Real simple. I cannot just let my people be. I, uh, I, it's, I, it's necessary that I free the minds of my people. That's necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why I came out of my mother's womb. I hear you so, on that. Of course, there are a lot of our people who are where they are. Should I just leave them there? No. Now, my responsibility is not to force them to do anything. My responsibility is simply to put the information out there. That's it. That's it. I will have to say this. When I first heard this information, I thought that people just didn't know. And if you told them, then they would see the light and they would they would abandon the lies. Oh no, not that easy. Whoa, when <laughs> but I what I came across was black people with the money may money mayweather on one side and pretty boy Floyd on the other with the knockouts. Oh, is yeah. what I encountered. And I just yeah. couldn't understand for the life of me why people wouldn't let this go, especially if the same enslaver who whipped our people gave me this information. And you know, he's a liar. So why are you believing it? I just, it, that was my shortcoming because I couldn't get it. And I remember having conversations with Anika and Jabari about this. This was before um, I, you know, we did the priesthood training and I would just be like, I don't understand it. And they explained to me a lot of the things that we've discussed in terms of you know, one thing is people are afraid of hell. That's a realization that I made myself. Mm -hmm. People have a different relationship with Christianity, with what they believe, with the church, with the pastor, relationships that I just didn't have mm -hmm. and thought processes that I didn't have. So so over time, I, under, I just understood that. And it was easier for me to see you can't turn on a fire hose and then give and then give people a straw and then say, go drink. People aren't, are not going to do that. Right. Now, however, for this, yeah, it's no, it's not that easy. 
for 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 but at the same time like what brother ray is saying we can't just sit and let our people just live in ignorance i'm gonna tell you for a couple reasons number one there are plenty of people who are searching and who want this information and just one clarification changes the game i was one of those people mm -hmm. if someone had told me at eight years old all of this i'd have been like well prove it because that's how i am prove mm -hmm. it because i was asking for proof they never gave me the proof that's why i didn't believe it if the next day someone had said, here's the proof, little eight-year-old, I'd have been like, show it to me. And mm -hmm. I'd have been like, boom. Then I'd be like, Pastor, he said this. What you say? So we have to tell and give people something. We can't just let this continue or things are not going to change. Now, specifically speaking of my friend, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. This is what we do. We have, we, we took the fire out of it. We took the caliente out, the cayenne mm -hmm. was out. Mm -hmm. But we still, this is what we do. And you have to do that. And that's my friend. And you, know what? you know, even their biblical text says, come now, let us reason together. In other words, let's talk about this. Let's have some, let's have some sober discussion here. Right, right. Okay. Conversation. You know? yeah. 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 Shucks. She's, Dar Daria said, I was told you get into that black stuff. <laughs> You're going to hell. I'm trying to save your soul. It's the same type of brainwashing and, and programming. Why? How did we become the bad guy when you were the enslaver? Let, let, let's let's deal with that for a second, because you'd be surprised how many people I talk to on a weekly basis who I actually I am the new version of Satan as far as they're concerned. Right. OK, Satan is no longer red with a pointed tail but he's a black ball headed man. Okay. Who wears glasses now who's telling folk that Jesus ain't real. And so they see me now as the devil. Well, the truth of the matter is uh, I'm not, I'm not this. I'm not, <laughs> listen, I, I say, as I've always prayed to everyone who challenged me, prove me wrong. That's all I ask. Prove me wrong. If you cannot invalidate what I say, then do one of two things. Have the maturity to lay aside what you've been believing and look into what I've said. Just right. Just investigate it. Or just go your merry way. <laughs> just go on. Because evidently this ain't for you. <laughs> and and, well, and that's, that's where I'm at now. You know, I, I'm really at the point now where if a person does not want to accept what I have to say, not a problem. OK, I'm not going to try to get you to experience freedom. And and, and I want to speak to that, too. You're talking about how pretty much people, our people are locked into this program. Sis, think about this. Think about this. And it helps me to understand why our people are so stuck into it. Follow this well. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. He was a lawyer in the courtroom for me. He was a doctor in the sick room for me. Now, when you got all this stuff in a person's head, mm -hmm. how do you come along and tell them that person never existed? Right. Yeah. Okay. You know, one of the worst things that one of the worst experiences that in in my in my career as a liberator was a brother in St. Louis who was incarcerated. Right? He used to go to the church that I am now the, the chief elder of. But it was another pastor there, of course, when it was a Baptist church. He got busted, went to prison. But in prison, he gave his life to Christ. Right? Mm -hmm. Actually had a visual manifestation in, the in, 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 in uh, theology that's called a theophany or a Christophany. To have a visual manifestation of God or a visual visual manifestation of Christ, so he had this visual manifestation. Okay, so he actually saw what he believed to be 
Jesus. Right. In his prison cell. How in the hell do I compete with that? <laughs> I don't know. I can't compete with that. And he gave, his, he gave his life to Jesus Christ. Well, then he comes out of prison, comes back to his home church. Now there's a new preacher there, me. And he hears me say that this person who he saw in his prison cell never existed. We got a problem. And I told him, do the homework, man. Don't take my word for it. Go do your research. Several weeks later, he came back and apologized. You did the work. But what hurt me more than anything, he ended up going back to the streets. So I'm not so quick now, okay, to tell a person that what they've been believing is not real. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's, it's almost like, am I really, am I really talking in love when I know that? This is all you stand on. Am I going to snatch this away from you? It's almost, if you can see this analogy, and I know you can see this. I don't know why I said that. You can see this analogy. Imagine a person standing on a rug, right? Yep. And you just grab that rug and snatch it out from under them. Now, what would be better? To grab the rug and start pulling it gradually through teaching that person or just snatch it by telling them that everything they believed in is a lie. You know, it's interesting that you that you mentioned that because this was this was a very difficult concept for me to grasp. I just I I, I can be left brained sometimes. I just I and I I just didn't understand how people could believe it. And and again, Anika and Jabari talked with me about this a lot because it was just like a, just like they couldn't they didn't want to accept the truth because they're afraid to go to hell i just literally couldn't understand it mm -hmm. and so over time i understood my relationship with the church and all the other things that i mentioned before jesus sunday school whatever was different than other people like i've never heard gospel music in my house my grandmother's house, my great grandmother's house, my, my mama's house, my daddy's house. Like never, not mm -hmm. one time in my entire life as a Ooh. foundational black American, there was never gospel in, at any family function mm -hmm. my entire life. So just to let you know how we were really weren't, you know, churchy people like that, you know. Okay. So, so it was, e it was easier, easier for you. It was easier for me. But yeah. Jabari and Nika explained to me like from the inside out, what goes on when you do have those kind of homes. Anybody who knows Jabari knows that he, he was raised Roman Catholic, went to Roman Catholic schools his entire life, right? So once I understood that my message was snatching the rug mm -hmm. from people, which was never my intention, mm -hmm. it made me stop and think. The second thing is, um, I'm pretty sure it was Jabari who gave... A, a, a similar analogy. Once he under, once this particular man understood that there was no hell, that he went out and committed um, a, a, a violent sexual crime against a teenager because mm -hmm. he, he's not going to hell. So now I can act a fool. I, I, can, I, I, I can relate. I had a brother in the village did the same thing. Yeah. So it makes you stop and think. And I, I just want to say that I, I wasn't trying to jump on Asar Aten in his comment. I want to make say that publicly. I, I addressed it and then I moved on speaking generally and I should have said I am no longer discussing that comment. Now I'm talking about something else because mm -hmm. it's always important during my Tuesday talks to um, have this part of the conversation if we, if we get to it on how we address and how we deal with our, our family members who they gonna have everybody gonna have a hair press. I don't know if people still do patent of the shoes. I'm so disconnected from that. I don't know. You're okay. gonna go home. You're gonna eat that pork that was given to us from enslavement. We're gonna eat too much food, gain more weight. That's a part of the rituals of the things that we do too. So how are we going to deal with our family members during the biggest, most important? Cell, uh, ceremony and celebration in okay. all of Christianity, especially, mm -hmm. especially if you show up with this. Oh, 
or if you show up with these, mm -hmm. or if you show up with 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 this, you know what I'm well, saying? Yeah. See, see, the, the 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 issue here is not so much how are you going to deal with your family members, as much as how are your family members going to deal with you? Right. You follow me? Yeah. Because in your paradigm, you know, or or those of us who have been liberated. We understand this principle here. We understand the circumference of awareness, mm -hmm. right? Our family members don't apply that principle, okay? They either say you either believe, you're either a believer or you're hell bound. Yep. <laughs> One of the two. One of the other. Okay? And that's all they know. That's what they've been taught. Right. So... How, in answer to your question, how do you deal with family members who are in, stuck in this religion and you're no longer there? But now, this sound Easter, a little crazy. But particularly but Easter. The question is, you don't deal with them at all. That's really it. Let them ask you. You see, when they come to you asking you, then the stage has been set. Okay, for you to liberate their African mind. But one of the things that we suffer from as a people is what I call unsolicited information. Mm -hmm. Nothing is much, nothing is as much as a of a turnoff is trying to trying to tell people or instruct people, and they didn't ask, they didn't ask you for that. You see, so we have to be sensitive to the timing. Is it a, is this the appropriate time to even talk about this or not? You know, or if not, leave them where they are. A great ancient African proverb says, leave him in the dark who loves the dark. Of course, darkness represents ignorance. Light represents knowledge. Okay, but we have a lot of our people who think they already know. So you have to just let them be. You got to let them be. Yeah, just let them be. Because I can tell you right now, you're not going to, man, you are not going to win. You're not. Approaching them with unsolicited information. No. They have to have an appetite for knowledge. They have to have an appetite to want to know. You know, as long as they don't want to know, then don't wait. The Bible says it this way, and I'm quoting biblical text. Cast not your pearl before the swine. Mm. The only thing they're going to do is trample it under their feet. Why? Because they can't appreciate the value in what's being said. They're not ready for it. They're not ready for it. And some people are never going to be ready for it. I had to accept that. You got to accept that. It's, or you or you be done went crazy. It's a lot less work too. Yes. It's a lot less work when you accept the fact that some people just think or never, they don't want to, I don't know, I guess it's the fear of hell. They don't want to go to hell. And they also don't want to feel like a fool and feel like they've been lied to. And, and I, and, and honestly, I, I listen, I had a problem with pastors when I found out that most of them learn this, this information during um, seminary school and, and pastoral school and stuff like that. Your girl was not happy. I was like, I, cause when I was a kid, I knew those pastors were lying. You guys, I knew it. I felt it in my little eight year old body. Yeah. That I was being lied to Yeah. The white pastors from the church that I went to and by the black pastors when I would go down South. And when I went to Spelman and would go to church, sometimes I'll be sitting there like this uh -huh. with a whole attitude. I'm like, why are you sitting in church with attitude? Just don't go. Right. Just stay home and watch the Lakers, which you, which you want to do that anyway, just uh -huh. do that, you know? And so when when I when I found that out, it and I'm gonna be honest with you, my respect for black pastors who continue to lie to our people generation after generation after new crop after new crop yeah. after new crop. I can't stand them, y'all. I'm gonna keep that real. Yeah. I'm respectful to them. I'm not gonna embarrass 
the shrine. I'm not going to embarrass my mama and I'm mm -hmm. not going to embarrass me. Right. But they are lying to them. They are a tool of this. They're the vessel for this at this, not mm -hmm. the only vessel, but they know better. I've yep. shared on Tuesday Talk before how when I first heard this information and when I first heard that the pastors know, I was at my homeboy's barbershop. He was cutting up a barber and I, I let him have it. I let that pastor have it. It was, it was, it was my friend. It was him and it was me. Three people who knew the truth. So just so we're clear, it was three people who already knew the truth. I let him have it. Mm -hmm. When he went home, he blocked me on Instagram. <laughs> and, and and you know why? He didn't call me a liar. He didn't say it wasn't true. He blocked me. How you a grown man blocking somebody on Instagram? You blocking a woman on Instagram because I told you the truth. So well. They, 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 they have to position themselves uh, to uh, be anti what you're saying, especially pastors. And I had to learn this being a pastor, right? And I don't like using that term. Uh, but, you know, so y'all don't call me pastor out there. All right, please. I don't use that term anymore because pastor means shepherd. That's what it means. And in order to be a shepherd, the people have to be sheep. You see, shepherds don't have disciples. Shepherds have sheep. And sheep are the dumbest things on the planet. You can't teach sheep. All right. So to the pastors out there who exalt themselves as though you are over, you, you refer to your flock. That's deep. A person referring to a member in their congregation as a sheep. That is an insult. You know, I tell the members of the African village, I'm not a shepherd and y'all are not sheep. I'm a teacher and y'all are disciples or students. You know, because you got to go teach others. You know, but it's time for the lies and the programming to cease. And it's, it's coming to an end because we're in a different age now. We're, we're, we're in an information age. And we're in the age of Aquarius. Yeah. Yep. And you have people who are curious. When I walk with my aunt around here in a predominantly white neighborhood, little, mm -hmm. little teenagers be knowing about it. They ask me about it. Yeah. And and, and since I carry my aunt, because we carry our aunts everywhere we go, I went to the supermarket and I for, I, I um, forgot something or whatever. But, but we were just talking. He was like, yeah, you're going through priesthood training. I was like, oh, yeah, I am. I'm thinking I must have told them. These little teenagers, they little, all look the same to me. There's a bag in your groceries. I wasn't paying attention. But like people know me in the community because I'm carrying this big wooden ark. Okay. Now, I want to say something. I said all that to yeah, say. Let me, let me see the ark. I want to see it. Uh, you, you already showed it. You saw it at the wedding. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yes. Yeah, this. This. Yes. Yeah. And so I said that to say that, you know, people know and the conversation happens. And so it's not like it was back in the day. You know, I want to address this with the pastors. Um, I mean, before I, we do that, before uh, we do that, before we do that, just in case there's someone out there who does not know or understand the symbology of the Ankh, mm -hmm. let's let's break that down for them. Sure. Out here. So okay? because you'd be surprised how many Christians think that's the symbol of Satan. You follow right, me? So here's the Ankh. And. It's not a cross. This, this means life. This predates the cross. Yes. This part represents the feminine principle or the uterus. The womb this of the female. This represents the masculine principle or the phallus. The phallus of the this, male. Right. This represents the children or the offspring or product. Okay. And now, at a very concrete level, we understand female, male, children. When, when fem females and males copulate, um, children are produced. It's, it produces life. Should do, right. But, yes. but, the, but the, the, the part of the symbol, symbology in it is the feminine principle and the masculine principle mm -hmm. at, to create. What that means is you have balanced energies that come together to create. There is feminine and masculine energy in everything. Yes. And when and when that comes together, you create. So yes, it stands for a woman and mm -hmm. all set. 
Yes, it stands for Asar, a male. Yes, it stands for Haru, the child, the offspring. But it's but it also has principles that um, permeate other entities, which which is what makes it so beautiful and useful across the board. Now you can see in older crosses that the this part of an older cross is a little wider like how this is wider mm -hmm. before it just became like two sticks so the closer the cross is like in coptic christianity the closer it is to kemet the more it looks like an ankh you can actually see the progression mm -hmm. from the ankh to the cross mm -hmm. the christian cross yeah mm -hmm. christian cross Mm -hmm. Okay, because um, because because that that's that's basically where they get that from. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I do want to address um what Gavin Amerson is saying and what other people are saying. His mm -hmm. question is: Shrine of my, you mean to tell me my homeboys, peoples who are pastors and bishops, know that Jesus ain't real? So let me say this. Come and say a couple things. In myth, everything is real. In the myth, Santa Claus is real in that myth, unless mm -hmm. you have my parents and you knew Santa Claus wasn't real. That's what I mean when I say my upbringing was different. In the, in the myth, we have a, a, a description of Jesus, skin of copper, hair, hair like wool, and, and we knew that he was a brown skinned black man. In the myth, in the myth, he is real. If your pastor went to seminary, he knows these stories. These you got that right. These stories are taught in seminary. You learn the history of Christianity. A lot of Christians don't know the history of Christianity. A lot of them have not read the Bible from beginning to end, inside and out. So mm -hmm. if, you're, if your pastor went to seminary, he knows these stories. If your pastor did not go to seminary, he mm -hmm. reads the Bible from the, from the uh, passages that was taught to him. He ignores the passages that a lot of people ignore that don't make sense, even though it's the word of God. They ignore what doesn't fit their narrative. If he was called to preach by God, he might not know the truth. Because if he wasn't formally trained, mm -hmm. then how would he know? Who's going to tell him? The mm -hmm. pastor who taught him, who might have gone to seminary, isn't going to tell him. So I am not saying that all pastors know. What I am saying is, the pastors who go, who, who went through seminary school, most likely know. Martin Luther King knew. Yep, he knew. He wrote but a it's, but, 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 on the Asara set story. Yep, yeah, but it's not because it was taught in seminary. Okay. And being a seminarian, I can I can say this. What seminary does is it teaches you how to dissect information. It teaches you how to investigate on a higher level. Uh, it teaches you to use etymology in your research, how important etymology is. So therefore you understand the original word meanings like I did with Pascha, for example, you see? Uh, and then because a lot of people think that the words in the Bible are meant just as they are read in English and nothing can be farther from, nothing could be more misleading or, or damaging than, than to take the Bible at face value, okay? Because the words in the Bible, even though they're, the Bible is written in English, the word meanings of biblical words are not the same thing as word meanings as Webster's dictionary would give it to you. You know, so you definitely need to understand the etymological meaning of biblical terms. That's what seminary helps you to do. So yes, pastors who have been to seminary have learned how to do word studies. That's one of the things that taught me that this stuff that I had been preaching was wrong. Just doing the etymological study of certain biblical passages. You know, like I said, like about John 11, for example, 11 chapter John, when mm -hmm. it clearly shows you there why Jesus was crucified, which, which he wasn't really crucified, but 
it explains why this this literary figure was crucified. You know, only because of word studies, though. Understanding the etymology, most of our black ministers are not qualified to do that. Right. So right. most most of our people are operating in sincere, empowered ignorance. Are most of our black pastors? Yes. Sincere. Mm, well, I here's here's what I know. I and I'm not trying to call out any schools, so I am intentionally not mentioning any schools. They are they 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 know this myth as a part of their education. Oh yeah. And and they are taught which verses to preach and which ver verses not to preach. They are taught these things. Mm -hmm. And so, Gavin, please don't cuss nobody out. And please don't say a booster shot said this from the shrine of my eye and you're going to cuss people out. Don't. He feels like how I felt when I fussed out that pastor at my friend's barbershop. Because to actually know a person who is an actual tool of ignorance and fear on your own people, I feel some type of way about it. I got you. You know what I'm saying? I so, Gabby, you. listen, you can hit me up on the um, Yoga Girl side on Instagram, and we can have a video chat. I don't want you cussing nobody out. Oh, he said, no, nah, I'm a chill. I got a cousin who's a preacher. Pull him <laughs> aside. Not today. Pull him aside later and be like, cuz, what's up? Talk to me. Have a conversation with him in a in a space where he he um <laughs> where he is able to speak freely, where you're not annoyed, and where you can actually have a conversation about it, where you're trying to gather information as to why this is what people are doing. How do I know this formula for talking to people? Because, like I said, your girl um was was I was really angry with these people because <laughs> I, I, why as black people are you doing this? And then we look at the history of what black people do and all of that other stuff. And it goes back to that kind of mentality. And, and we also have to acknowledge the cohesive force and protection of the black church during the civil rights era. So we did have some moment in our history where the black church functioned and served some sort of purpose for the community. Okay. So yeah, when you find this out, I was like, what? Your girl was hot. <laughs> now I progressed from that and I was volunteering. No, I'm sorry. I was um, teaching comedic yoga and I'm going to be vague on purpose at a place. I'm going to just say that. And there were, clergy who were physically in that place and just like it was my friend the barber and me i'm sorry my friend the pastor and me it was me and the other pastors and we were having a conversation and i basically asked them if this isn't something that i can really do how, how is it that you can preach this when y'all all went to seminary school y'all all know that this is a myth all y'all know it's a myth so they didn't really answer me. I said, it's just us in here. I'm not going to go out and tell people. I said, but it's just the pastors and me. This was before I was in the priesthood training. Was it? I don't remember. But anyway, and so, you know, one, one of the pastors was on the computer like this the whole time. He just ignored me. He was like, I want to be like, Negro, you hear me talking. Why are you not looking over here? But I didn't. That was up in the dome and I left it there. And I was able to have a conversation with them to really truly try to understand why this is something that they choose to do. And one of the um, pastors said to bring the, to bring a good message, mm -hmm. which, which comes back to a, 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 when someone said it's the Bible tells the, the truth, but is not true. Meaning you can find morals to the story. Now, if the black pastor said these are the morals to the story and the stories come from Africa, then go ahead and use the Bible if that's what, how you choose, even though that's not my choice. Mm -hmm. You don't get those very two important components to it. 
So when you hear this information for the first time, just sit with it for a second because the initial shock to know that the person you've been looking at all this time knows the truth and is looking you in your face, lying to you, I'm telling you, I just feel like that's wrong. And and well, look, let, let me help you with that, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that to everybody who's watching, you have to understand that the Christian church has a structure that it must operate in. They were literally the religious leaders, the Christian church, period, Church of England, okay. Uh, was issued orders by the king, or either it was Queen Elizabeth, the king's mother, one or two, either Queen Elizabeth or King James. Uh, but if you Google certain sermons and homilies, you will see that this is a collection of, I believe, 42 different sermons that the king decreed is to be taught mm. in the church and nothing else. Mm. And it's right there on the internet. Certain sermons. Write this down, y'all. Certain sermons and homilies to be taught in the churches. And that same guide or that same rule or that same um, um, restriction is put on pastors today. Mm. Nothing is to be taught outside of those 42 different subjects. I feel like screaming, y'all, but I'm not mm. gonna. But I feel you see like it? did you Google it? You see it there? No. Um I'm about oh, to you saw it. Okay. No, just listening to you say this, I didn't know yeah. that, that that there was a name for what they can and can't preach. So you learn something every day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was hey, listen, I, I was under, I mean, I, I remember people saying to me, man, you can't preach that. You can't. And I'm saying, why not? I mean, here's here's the evidence for what I'm saying. You just can't preach that. I, I, I preached. I remember I was at a church and the pastor sat me down. I mean, just stopped me right in the middle of my discourse and said, uh, sir, you know, give me the mic. Have a seat, please. Because what you're teaching, we don't teach that in this church. I said, but man, it's right here in the Bible. Okay, and everybody was taking notes and turning to these Bible verses. It's right here in the Bible. What do you mean you don't teach it? We don't I, we don't teach this is the church of God in Christ. We don't teach that here. So okay. And I got a chance to see firsthand the condition of our people and why we are in the position we're in. Our people are messed up because of poor leadership. Hmm. Pharaoh, the whole concept. Pharaoh, let my people go. Well, a lot of pastors are wicked pharaohs. And just like we said back in the day, tell old pharaoh, let my people go. I say that to a lot of preachers today. Mm. Let the people go. Oh my God. You, you know you are, you know you have incarcerated their minds with your lies. Mm. Let the people go. You know, it's deep. I remember a pastor in, in St. Louis and uh, I started teaching on the United States government and the COINTELPRO and King Alfred plan, and all that kind of stuff. And it got back to him and he called me. He said, hey, guys, what's the stuff you teaching, man? I said, like, what are you talking about? He said, I don't know, but this is a Baptist church, man. You don't teach that stuff over there. I said, brother, listen, you preach what you want to preach at your church. This is my house. And I know what my assignment is, mm. okay? And this is the preacher who led the march against my church. All, I'm not, not all of the black ministers, but the black ministers and major black pastors in St. Louis all marched against my church, saying this man is teaching bad doctrine. Mm. And I said, just prove me wrong. What do I said is not true. Prove you know, it. We ain't got to go through all this. We ain't got to go into marching and all that mess just just prove me where i'm show me where i'm wrong hasn't been done yet and that was october of 1998 that was 1998 years. yo yep but what they did say to me is hagan's 
we're going to stop you if it's the last thing we do. Mm. That's what they said to me. Yep. And I told them, well, y'all better be able to shoot straighter than me. <laughs> All I got to say, because <laughs> I ain't playing. I mean, this is serious, man. This is serious. I mean, you know, I mean, just think, can you imagine how much money and energy and planning went into establishing this program of lies? They're not just going to let somebody come along and undo what they did without penalty. That's why our leaders were put to death. The liberator. Nobody appreciates the liberator, but the liberated. And that's it. That was deep. Brother Ray said he knows his assignment, and you better shoot straighter than me. You got that right. And 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 nobody appreciates liberation but the liberated. That's right. Whew. So. You know, I, I love having Brother Ray on. I, I have an idea. <laughs> Brother Ray and I are friends off camera. That's that's my homie. That's my partner right there. Yeah, right. You know, right. Um, we have a good time just talking and listening. Me doing the listening because because Brother Ray has a lot to, to to give and just you know our conversations or whatever. So um, I knew that we were we were gonna get have something great to discuss. I just want to say that. We are living in the age of inform in the information age. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have Tuesday talk every Tuesday. And y'all, I, I do the best that I can do to bring us information to unlock some of the the non-physical chains that are still that we still have of enslavement. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's to free your mind, right? And so every every Tuesday talk. I leave you with something that you can go do right away. And what you can go do right away is a couple things. Um, it was certain sermons and hom and homilies. Where did hom I? Yeah, homilies. Homilies. I can't even read my own writing, y'all. Yeah, H-O-M-I-L-I-E-S. There you go. I put that back up there. Certain sermons and homilies. Uh, actually, the rest of it is to be taught in the churches. Okay, let me put that in there. Certain, certain sermons and homilies to be taught in the church. Yes, and I think homilies is H M H O M I. I think H O M I probably. I, it, it, I might be wrong with that. Uh, in the church. I'm looking at the word homo. <laughs> Sorry. In the church. I put in church, y'all. Hold on. In Let, me the church. See Let me see how homilies are spelled here. So, so what I'm saying to you, what I'm trying to say is this. You are going, we are going to hear a lot of stuff. The laundry is coming out. Yep. We, we, we it's, it's not going to be, um, pretty. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hurtful. We're going to be disappointed. People have lied to us. That is that is what we are uncovering. Mm -hmm. We're ripping off scabs really fast, which has a certain kind of pain. We're ripping off scabs kind of slowly, which has a certain kind of pain. This is what we're dealing with. But on the other side of that is you regaining your African mind back so Teach. we can stop acting crazy. Teach, teach. That's teach. on the other side of all of this. So you know, and and, and Queen, people say, mm -hmm. okay, if you're taking away my religion, I hear this a lot. You know, you taking away my religion, what you gonna replace it with? Truth. The truth. What do you need it else to be replaced? See, that's the problem. We're so used to having a placebo. Damn, I need to preach. I need to preach on that right there. I need. I need to teach on that. A placebo called Jesus. Mm, I'm gonna write that down for you so you can do that. A placebo. You can yeah. Come back here, that one. We're Come so on back. Used, we're, huh? Come on back here. Yeah. Okay. 
a placebo. You know, now, of course, for those out there who don't know what a placebo is, a placebo is when the doctor gives you a shot of water and you think it's medication mm -hmm. or gives you sugar pills and you think it's for high blood pressure. OK, uh, it's a placebo. But because you took something again, the power of your mind, of your mind, the power that you give to the placebo, you know, if you go back to the doctor, the doctor say, how you feel? You say, oh, doctor, I feel so much better. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, I, you don't know that 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 those pills you gave me really helped me. And the doctor says, wow, because the doctor knows the whole thing was psychosomatic. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know. A placebo called Jesus. Now I know that's offensive to a lot of people, but I don't mean no harm. But we got to set y'all free, man. Right, and and the people who um, who who want to know, and and someone had a comment that you know they you know felt like th th this wasn't right, and then you hear the truth, and you know you weren't crazy the whole time because mm -hmm. someone gave you something that 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 was the truth. Yep. And and you're you're uh, appreciative of that. There's a question. I know we give homage to our ancestors. I wonder what happens if your ancestors died still believing the lie. So, you, I love. I, okay, did a brother or a sister ask, ask that question? A woman, a sister. Okay. Okay. Uh, you want me to answer that? I mean, you can. I was going to answer, but you can answer it. I was. I was oh, going to. No, you go ahead and answer. It's your so, show. You know, with 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 the ancestors, the, the way that ancestors were treated and ancestors thought and believed were the product of wherever they were in, in their particular situation. Mm -hmm. When when you die, one of the things that our ancestors did was we we took out certain organs and put them in what it called canopic jars. Um, the heart was taken out, rewrapped and put back in the body. The brain was sucked out through the nose and discarded because you weren't going to use the brain. You were going to use your intuition. So mm -hmm. we have ancestors who died believing the lie. That was a part of even though your, your, your belief is not physical, but that was a part that came from the physical world. And in the in the afterlife, when you go into the hall of Ma'ati, though, or which which would be called heaven, equivalent to heaven. They, they, they're, that's not anything that they believe anymore mm -hmm. because they're going on intuition and their true nature, their true nature and the, the works of what they've done. They, if their heart was lighter than a feather, if they live their life in as much truth as they knew, not the, what is the truth or what is the li a lie, but the universal moral truths, if they followed that, then they went on. Mm -hmm. So that ancestor is an ancestor that you still reach out to. That ancestor is an ancestor that you still pay homage to. You still give the offerings to this ancestor. That ancestor is still a good person. And in, in the, the intuitive part of that ancestor before they were brainwashed or given this information that that wasn't true. It's, it's, it's almost, yeah, the soul never dies. It's almost like the, 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 the person is made whole again. And if I want to use a more, familiar way to explain that mm -hmm. you know so so um i want to thank everybody for showing up we've 128 people and we always have a lot of people when when brother ray comes on because oh, wow. because we do because we know that we're gonna get it we're gonna get the topic <laughs> we're gonna get some other stuff it's all going to be that is so sure. what is your tangible takeaway from this Tuesday talk. A couple of tangible takeaways. We're not ripping the rug out from people because they're going to fall back on their head and you're the one who injured them. That's what there you are, was saying I'm to good. me. You don't want to injure people. You don't want to injure people. And I want you to know I'm speaking from experience, not from a glass house or a shelf or pedestal. Nope. Mm -hmm. So we don't, we don't want to injure anyone. We should leave people where they are to a degree, mm -hmm. if they ask you questions, if it, you have the right to answer honestly, yes. why are you not closing your eyes? Because that's not how I pray. Why are you X, Y, Z? Then you can explain it. 
to them because when they ask, they're ready for a little bit of your, they're ready for a little bit of truth. I didn't understand why I was told just live your life and be the light. I was told that by so many people. They're going to ask you about what's different from what they think is normal and how you live your life and what you wear and, and, and the way you pray and you carry this off. What is all of that about? When they want to know, they will ask you. Now, again, we don't have to yield. If you want to have a conversation about something, feel free. Because there is always that person out there who's looking, but don't know the white, the white, the, the right words to ask, mm -hmm. don't recognize what a symbol means, just like that was me. Didn't know what Kemet meant, didn't know what an ankh was. I was in Atlanta in the 90s. We had hip hop dudes talking about it, or they were rapping about it. I did not know it was spirituality. And I did not know that the spirituality was connected to history because coming from a European American perspective. The spirit and the religion is taken out of everything and it's a separate entity. So mm -hmm. yes, we still do have conversations, but just be judicious with it. That's our second takeaway, right? The third takeaway is you're going to be, you're going to be angry. Like, yo, what pastor so-and-so lied to me? I know homie, he'd be at my house on Sundays eating my mama's pork. Mm -hmm. Before you speak to him, just chill for a minute. Okay. The last takeaway is certain sermons and homilies to be taught in the church. Read about it and see what that means to you. Mm -hmm. Interpret that. Because this, see, I, I didn't know this. I'm learning this myself. Certain, certain sermons and homilies to be taught in the church. That's my homework too. Every Tuesday talk is a takeaway. And, that's, and that is one of your takeaways. The last thing is this. We're going through initiation right now. As a matter of fact, there should be no initiates online right now. <laughs> right at this, we're going through initiation now. Our next initiation applications will open December 2022. We talk about these things. We explain these things. That's one place to get grounded in knowledge. Okay. The second thing is we have Tuesday talk, as you all know. The third thing is we have Ascension every other Sunday. And we don't have Ascension this Sunday. We have Ascension on the 24th of April is our next Ascension. You will learn about the spirituality if you go to Ascension. And you'll be able to get it in bits and pieces and, 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 make, you, and, and make it make sense. Okay? So I, I really hope that, that everybody um, got something from Tuesday Talk. It was a little... We had a little fireball, a little, little blaze for a second. I'm it's not okay. sure. I love it. I, 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 I love I'm certain stuff on fire. With, with the two of us, with Brother That's, Ray and the Booster yes. Shot, um, be a little fireball for a second. Yes. No you know, Queen, before we go, you just mentioned sermon, certain sermons and homilies. Yes. What's dangerous about that? And this is so important for for everybody to understand. Let's use this analogy, right? Okay. Let's say you have a five hundred piece jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. All right, and you need all five hundred pieces of this puzzle to see the whole picture. But you're only allowed to have certain pieces or certain sermons of that 500 piece puzzle, 42 pieces in fact. <laughs> How in creation are you gonna ever make sense of putting the puzzle together if you only have certain pieces of the puzzle? And that's where we are. That's where we are. You can't put the puzzles together until you have the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Well, nothing but the truth. Yes. Yep, that is it. So um, this journey is definitely going to have some emotions. I, I see that someone said, and I can't get to all the comments because sometimes they go by. And so if I missed your comment, yeah. it's, it's most certainly not intentional. I'm absolutely disappointed, but liberated. It's Kemetic Kimoyo, Yoruba Ka. 
Yoruba, Komoyo time. Listen, we're going to have this roller coaster of emotions as we unveil all of all of what hasn't been told to us in the truth. And I will say this, there's a new generation and we can teach the new generation so they don't have to shed back anything. They don't have to shed back anything. So that's, there's, there's, there's always hope with that. Mm -hmm. you, you learn about it. Um, and, and then you can teach the youth in your family. That's what I'm going to do. There you go. That's it. That's how we, that, that is how we rescue the next generation. Oh, by okay. liberating ourselves, you know, and I got a text from a brother McCoy from the shrine there. Oh much, yes. Much murder you too, brother. Mm-hmm. That's brother. That's Sin Lee. Yes, but, yes. Yeah, brother Lee McCoy. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I, I, we got to bring this to a close. And just like Ooh. last time, brother Ray was here, I just had to stop it because listen, we're gonna wear you out, brother Ray. <laughs> listen, this is why I get out of bed every day. Mm. This is why I eat dinner. This is why I exercise. This is why. Whatever I do to live my life is so that I can do this. Yes. This is it. This I is have it. nothing else to do. Okay. I mean, I shouldn't say it that way. I do have other things to do, but none of them are as important as freeing the minds of my people. Yes. Yes. You know, you know for, for, for the people who came late or who just got here, this will air. Uh, this will be saved. Um, pardon the pun. And um, you'll be able to go back on the Shrine of Ma'at Facebook page and YouTube page and Comedic Legacy page and, and watch it. I don't I know. know. Mine as well, because I shared it to my page. And and also um, with the African Village. And mm -hmm. that'll be made available tonight sometime. Because what it does is it, it it like saves it and it stores it. And then right. you can see it almost immediately. So you'll be able mm -hmm. to watch it again for those of you who came a little bit later or who just joined and Tuesday talk is most of the time it's on Tuesday right. <laughs> and at 7 PM Eastern time. So 7 PM New York city time on a Tuesday is when I air Tuesday talk for the overwhelming majority of the times. Sometimes and when I'm trying to grab brother Ray or grab some other people, like I interviewed Curtis blow, that was like in the middle of the day, just, you know, mm -hmm. he lives in California. So sometimes it's not at that time, but, You'll get a flyer if you if you like the shrine of Maat's Facebook page. You will see when the next guest is is gonna be um, is gonna be um, um, that that we're gonna have. All right. So I'm gonna try to get Brother Ray. Let me rephrase. I'm gonna get Brother Ray to come on back when he. Sister, you, together. you know that is not a problem. Anytime, <laughs> anytime for you. You know that. I know that's right. I know that yeah. when he puts together his certain sermons and homilies to be taught in the church presentation, he we gonna have it here. All right. All right now. All righty. Oh, that's gonna be good. Cause yes. cause, we, cause we're gonna go through uh, the basic primary doctrines that are mm -hmm. taught in the Christian church, and we'll also show how the omission of other doctrinal points, okay, mm. lead to the detrimental effect of your spirituality. Mm. Like I said, not giving you all of the puzzle pieces is the worst thing that can be done. That can, that's right. The worst thing that can be done. So yep. listen, a couple last questions before we go. People want to know where you got the shirt. <laughs> the shirt is uh, fine. You know, really deep. Um, I believe... I get shirts from brothers and sisters when I go do lectures mm -hmm. and the vendors want to give me shirts. Mm -hmm. I did a lecture. I don't even remember where it was, but the vendor gave me this shirt. It's hot. It's fire. Thank you. And I believe it on the back of the shirts, on the back of the shirts, it says pharaonic. Pharaonic? Yes. Like pharaoh, but mm -hmm. pharaonic. So that's probably, you'd have to probably reach out Maybe just Google pharaonic oh. or whatever and see what comes up. Yeah, Google this, you guys, pharaonic shirts and just see. Okay. 
the other question was someone asked me about what Ankh and Ma'at means. Ankh means life, N means in, uh, Ma'at, in balance. So that means go forth in balance, and meaning li li live your life in a way that, you're, you're welcome, Tyler, that mm -hmm. you are balanced, that yep. you are just, that you are fair, that you show reciprocity, that you are in right order. Ma'at is not just the actual scales. Ma'at is not just the actual divine divine feminine image that we see. Ma'at mm -hmm. is also a way that you live your life. Yes. You, you know, with, with, yes. with the things I mentioned, right order, reciprocity, justice, law, balance. Now, remember, it's being transliterated. We have the we have the medunetra or the glyph. Then you have the sound that it makes, then you have the translation. The translations can be different based upon the way that person interprets it, mm -hmm. interprets the context, and also that person's paradigm and perspective. That's why you might see other uh, principles of ma'at, but it all is, is based around being balanced and fair, compassionate, reciprocity, right order, law, justice. That's ma'at, okay? Mm -hmm. So when someone says anka ma'at, as usually as you're greeting or as you're leaving, live your life in in uh, right order. We also have um, Ankin, um, Ankin Shem um go forth in peace, like just be peaceful, you know? So, so that's what those words means. And you know what? I just want to say thank you for asking me that question because as we come to a close, I want to say thank you for joining Brother Ray, thank you for being here. Oh, Queen, you're very welcome. You know, anytime. Anytime. I appreciate him for that. And yeah. as we leave, I will say to all of you, Ankh and Ma'at. Ankh and Ma'at. And go forth in peace. Shem yeah.